Hi everyone, Dr. Nemechek here. Um, I want to touch on about autonomic dysfunction and just in a real simple sense, like what is this? And you know, the problems that happen in the, in the kids with autism and developmental delay. So the autonomic nervous system is kind of like the automatic nervous system. It's part of the brain that coordinates all the other physiology in your in your body. So it coordinates all your organs, your blood pressure, your heart rate, your metabolism, your emotions, your immune system. Um, and uh, it's prone to being injured. And especially like when you get a concussion, most of the stuff people complain of are um, injuries to the autonomic nervous system. Now the kids can get injuries physical injuries and we know something as minor as a soccer ball hitting your head will snap some neurons in your brain okay so toddlers you know falling banging their head into stuff you know they're getting little injuries uh, we know the immune system can do it in particular COVID can really give you a whopper uh, kind of inflammatory concussion emotions can do it and there in the last year there's some evidence that actually the propionic acid that's uh, we believe is being leaked out into the bloodstream by the bacteria that that can cause a chemical injury in children. And so now the nervous system is generally robust enough to very quickly fix all of these things unless you have chronic inflammation. And that's why we're so focused on inflammation here is we try to reduce the inflammation and that allows the nervous system to, to not only prune and allow the child to develop normally, but to repair the injuries in the predominantly in the autonomic nervous system. And so you can take the symptoms you have from autonomic damage and really think of them as just two things. One is the intestinal conveyor belt slows down. All right. And because it's really each segment, the esophagus to the stomach, to the small intestine, to the colon, to the rectum, and then out, each segment has its own symptoms. And the most common we see after a uh, common intestinal symptom you see after, say, a simple concussion in an adult is constipation. Yeah, about 50 to 70% of patients when they get hit in the head are constipated in the first week. All right. And so it's a neurological problem, constipation. You can also have bloating, slow motility of the small intestinal tract. You can have poor emptying of the stomach, which gives you, in its worst form, what's called gastroparesis, meaning paralyzed stomach, but just in a more moderate form, common form, heartburn, reflux, like nausea, especially in the morning when, because the stomach builds up acid. So autonomic dysfunction can cause things that, you know, symptoms that are coming from the motility going too slow. Now, the slow motility of the small intestine, I believe, is the primary reason why the children relapse so quickly if you stop, say, Rifaxman or, you know, the prebiotics. Now, eventually that'll get fixed, but that's the reason why that happens. The other main thing that happens is that, so you have slow intestinal motility. The other thing you have is low blood pressure in the brain. Okay, you have trouble pushing blood into the brain, and when that happens, the oxygen that's stored in your red blood cells, you know, so you breathe, you fill them up with oxygen, you gotta push it up your brain at the right pressure and then the oxygen flows into your brain. That won't happen well. And so the brain has suboptimal oxygen levels. Now this low brain pressure and subsequent low oxygen, this is attention deficit disorder. This is ADD. We call it cerebral hypoperfusion, brain low pressure. Okay, and um, very, very common. Even in just plain old adults, this is brain fog in most adults. This is um, minor cognitive impairment in the elderly. Okay, they got low brain pressure. Now, that low brain pressure and lack of oxygen in the brain is poor focus, all right? It's irritability, like anxiety and then aggression to a certain degree. It's craving salt and sugar or craving liquids because those type of foods boost blood pressure to the head. And so the brain generates this craving to try to give itself oxygen. It causes hyperactivity. 
because movement of the leg muscles will generate blood pressure to the head so the brain is actually making your child run around okay it causes children to lay flat a lot and slouch and what they're doing is they're getting rid of the gravity problem and if they lay flat it's easier to get blood to their head okay a whole bunch of different symptoms here in the children from just really one injury that causes two mechanical kind of problems slow motility of the intestinal conveyor belt or low blood pressure of the brain these all can happen from one injury and the reason why they don't get better and recover normally is from one cause inflammation that's why we obsess about it we got to get the kids to repair their brains i hope that's helpful for you all otherwise everybody have a good weekend take care